Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, wait, can't quite hear me yet. Maybe. That, all right. That sounds like you can hear me now. All right. Hi, everybody. I apologize for not doing this in French, but about all I can say is désolé, je n'ai pas pas français. Um, and that's as far as I go. So hopefully you all will follow along. This is uh, sort of one of my easier talks in terms of complexity. We're not going to delve into compilers or figure out how to write extensions. We're going to talk about something called the Framework Interoperability Group. Anyone actually heard of PHP Fig? Okay, good. Good starters. Are you producing or consuming uh, PSR-related uh, packages? All right, so most of you here don't need to hear what I have to say, so um, we can make this really easy. Um, first off, about me, uh, as the introduction so uh, eloquently put in a language that I barely followed, um, I have been working on PHP for quite some time, about uh, 15, 16 years. Uh, the guy who gave me access to do so is sitting up in the front row right there. Uh, yeah, you did. Um, I have also worked on HHVM, which is sort of the alternative PHP runtime uh, insofar as um, the three people in the world that use it, I suppose. Uh, I uh, helped develop the extension API that's in there. Uh, I love making things that help people make things. Uh, I also work up MongoDB as my day job, making uh, database servers. Mongo users? Hmm? Not quite as many. Wow. M more hands for Fig than for Mongo. That's, that's scary for my stock price. Uh, but hopefully, uh, hopefully other people are. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, I'm also the release manager for PHP 7.2. So uh, hopefully you all are on the latest release of PHP 7.2 by now, right? 7.25 everywhere? Yeah, I know I'm not going to get a lot of hands for that. So what is FIG? Um, as I said, it's the Framework Interoperability Group. Its purpose is to get all of these fantastic uh, libraries and frameworks and applications all speaking a little bit more of a common language with each other so that we as application developers developing our own systems based on these frameworks and these libraries can write things that, uh, without having to write a bunch of glue to fit things together. I mean, the whole point of PHP as a language is to be a glue for these underlying libraries. It would be great if the ecosystem we built on top of it had the glue already available for us to begin with. Uh, we have lots of frameworks actually participating in our processes. Um, Zen Framework, Drupal, Cake, Drupal, uh, notably absent WordPress, they don't get involved a lot in what we do because they sort of have their own little private ecosystem, but we'd like to welcome them into the fold someday. Um, and yeah, so what the FIG does is the FIG produces PSRs. A PSR is a PHP standards recommendation. This is our attempt to say, hey, if you're going to do X, here's a way you might do X that everyone else is doing just the same. It's codifying these, uh, these, these standard uh, idioms and methodologies, and more importantly, common interfaces. So if you're working with a date time in PHP, for example, you might instantiate a date time object, but that date time object actually inherits from the date time interface, which the date time immutable object also inherits from. So when you go passing that around your system, you'll type hint for date time interface and be able to accept both objects. PSRs and uh, PHP fig is basically the same thing, but writ much larger for larger concepts like uh, HTTP interfaces and caching and things like that. Um, PSRs come in about three flavors. The most boring of those flavors, in my opinion, are the coding standards PSRs. These are just recommendations to say, hey, if you want your code to be readable by other people, if you want people to look at your code and not say, oh, this is a different style than mine, it's tabs versus spaces, and therefore I hate it. Um, it's something you could choose to pick up. Personally, I have never actually properly adhered to any of the coding standard PSRs because I just like my own style more. Um, they are, of course, recommendations. You can do what you want. Um, Autoloaders, much more common. People use Composer, right? A lot of Composer users. Fantastic. I love Composers. Composer is the best thing to happen to PHP in 20 years, which is impressive because PHP is about 20 years old. Um, PSR4, uh, most common autoloader we all use, PSR0, it's sort of predecessor. Um, those are sort of unique within the FIG ecosystem, those four PSRs. Pretty much everything else falls under actual useful code sort of uh, things where we define interfaces and we say, 
wherever you get your objects, if they conform to these interfaces, you can count on them behaving in a particular way. And we're very particular about how we, uh, uh, how we define what those behaviors are so that everybody can actually conform to them very well. So why? Why would you care? Well, as a application developer, I'm definitely going to care about being able to re reuse the most library components that I can with the least amount of effort because programming is an inherently lazy profession. We want to do the least amount of work and let the computer do the most amount of work. And when it comes to code maintainability and code portability, that low amount of effort comes in the form of, hey, I don't like how Guzzle is treating my HTTP requests anymore. I want this other library that's based on the latest hotness that does HTTP 2.0 and all that wonderful jazz. So I want to swap them out. Oh, do I have to write a whole bunch of new code to use the new library? Maybe not. Maybe, as long as they expose the same interfaces, I can just plug that new library in and we can go to town, not have to do anything else. That's the dream. That's what PDO was supposed to be, right? People remember PDO? Anyone actually still using PDO? PDO um, is, is definitely still in use, but I think it never really appreciated its dream of being that unified way of getting to all databases because PDO was extremely um, constrained in its ability to evolve. PDO is tied tightly to your PHP version. You have PHP 5.6, well you have this PDO and this interface and that's all you'll ever have. Moving things up into the language itself, having these sorts of abstractions in PHP means that you're not tied to PHP language and more importantly you have a lot more people working on it and especially people who are invested in these particular subject matter areas. PDO is basically the brainchild of one person. Wes Furlong sat down one day and said, you know, I'm tired of having to deal with MySQL versus PGSQL. I'm gonna write something that satisfies that need. Well, as a result, he didn't necessarily think through all the weird edge cases of the way SQLite works, or the way Oracle works, or the way MongoDB works. MongoDB doesn't fit into DB, uh, PDO at all because it's designed around SQL relational databases. What if we'd had all those people in the room talking as peers, as equals, to come up with an interface that made more sense, that would fit Redis, that would fit Memcache, that would fit all of these different database backends? PDO might be a lot stronger than it is today. And someday we'll work on PDO too, maybe. So, from an application developer point of view, that's what you want. You want something that's going to have to be the least amount of work to you to actually use these different libraries all that you can. As a library author point, from a library author point of view, you want the same thing. You want the most people possible to be able to use your library so that they're finding those edge cases, so they're sending you those bug reports so that your library gets better, so that your use of your library gets better. And you get other contributors helping out with your library as well. So it's a very co-beneficial sort of arrangement. So how do they get made? I keep using words like, you know, having everyone in the room as equals, democratic processes. PSRs are made literally by the people who show up. I come up with an idea, I say, hey, you know what? I don't like PHP stream layers. I think they're horribly implemented. They're an era of a bygone time. Who came up with that? Oh yeah, Wes did that as well. Um, one guy sitting in a room decided this is what stream should look like to be able to fit uh, what PHP's been doing with file I I.O. for years and years. And he came up with a good design, but it's not a design that's continued to grow, and it's definitely not continued to evolve with PHP. So let's get a lot of people in the room who understand these problems, who deal with these problems every single day. Wes certainly does, and he's working on C and, and mail systems and all kinds of other stuff that aren't related to PHP anymore. So let's get those people in the room who actually know how to deal with it. I say, all right, I want to do this. What do I actually want to do? So the first thing I have to do is I have to come up with a scope document, which in fig terms is meta. Uh, so I will say, I am declaring the streams PSR meta document. Here are my goals. And I'll show you what those look like. Here's the HTTP client meta document. Don't try to read this. This is on the PHP fig website. You can go to GitHub later on if you actually want to see what's in here. But this is just a statement of goals. This says, an HTTP client should be able to go out and get a resource from somewhere else. Duh. It should not be able to bug you a loaf of bread. So we're constraining what our problem space is, what we're trying to solve, why we're trying to solve it. And along the way, 
we're bringing other people into the conversation. We're saying, well, who has subject matter expertise on, in this case, HTTP clients? Well, Guzzle's got a lot of su subject matter expertise. Let's bring them into the room. Who else has got expertise? Zen Framework, really relevant for them to be thinking about this problem as well. HTTP plug. So we get a bunch of people in the room and we say, all right, let's all agree this is what we want to do. So let's put this meta document together. And then we're going to go to the fig group and we're going to say, okay, we got an idea. We're going to write an HTTP streams, uh, HTTP client, sorry, mixing my, my PSRs, uh, PSR. So we go to what's called the acceptance vote. The acceptance vote is just sort of a first catch of, hey, can we at least all agree that this is even a rational idea? Since we've already got people with buy-in at this point, we have a minimum of five people who have said this is a good idea, chances are the vote to accept it to become a formal PSR is going to pass. I don't think we've ever had one come up that we didn't just unanimously say, all right, that's great, let's go move forward with it. But we do go through that process so that if there are issues, if somebody says, no, I don't think that this should be a PSR, it's a great time for them to justify why that is. And the people who vote on that are a uh, committee of 12 people called the core committee. I'm one of them. Um, we actually have 11 people right now. We lost our Welshman. Um, he's, al he's alive. He's fine. He just wandered off. Um, once that's voted in, the secretaries will actually assign a number to that. So P HTTP clients, that became PSR 18. And now that committee is currently working on that PSR to work out the specific details of it. And they're taking that meta document as instructions to create their actual recommendation. And again, we have a nice written up document, includes what we want these interfaces to look like, what they should do, lots of doc block in here, specif specifying exactly how they should work, what exceptions these things should throw. So anyone using this PSR knows exactly how it's going to behave in the wild and what exceptions they need to be catching, what uh, edge cases have already been thought through and are being dealt with by implementations. <coughs> when that working group has decided that it's ready to go, they're gonna hold an internal vote just with, amongst themselves and if they've got at least a quorum that says, uh, at least a majority that says this is a good idea, they're going to go back to the fit group and they're going to say, okay, here is our great almighty written PSR. We're awesome and this is what we think it should be. It does not immediately go into effect. Instead, we go into a four-week review period, minimum four-week, during which time everybody has a chance to say, hey, did you guys think of this? Hey, what about this edge case? And in most cases, hopefully, the working group has already got those answers and they're saying, yeah, we thought about that. Here's our answer for it. It's in the document right here. You missed it. It's okay. Or, all right, we'll add that. We'll put some clarifying language in. And we come up with a really solid recommendation at, at the end of that process. We hold two final votes. One is subject to the member projects. So Zen Framework, Drupal, uh, Cake, all of those. They're going to cast their vote. There's 38 projects in FIG right now. We need at least 50% quorum, and at least two-thirds of those must vote in favor of it to become a PSR. And we do one last round of the core committee, which again, 50% quorum and two-thirds majority. And then, ta-da, we have a PSR. And we've done that successfully for eight PSRs so far. No, sorry, 11. I forgot that was zero through four. Um, I mentioned PSR zero for Composer. This is, of course, deprecated. We don't encourage people to use PSR zero anymore, but it does still exist. Uh, this is what I call the pair auto-loading PSR. Back when pair was first created, anyone, does anyone remember the PHP extension and application repository pair? Um, it is sort of the pre uh, predecessor of Composer. It's a spot to put packages that are written in PHP that all work together handily. Um, Composer is way, way better. I'm going to underline that several times. Jordy, if you're watching this video later on. Um, but pair, of course, came into time before we had namespaces. So we had underscores in our class names. It was a dark, terrible, awful time. You kids today don't know how good you have it. PSR0 will split those underscores into directory names. Just formalize that standard so that everybody knows how to find their, their classes wherever they are when the autoloader runs. PSFR, of course, updates that now that we have namespaces. Treat namespaces like directory, much more straightforward. 
We also introduce the recommendation that you remap your base namespace. Um, all my classes are going to be under s Goldman slash something slash the actual code. So we just take that leader out when we actually package it up. I mentioned PSR 1 and 2. These are the coding standards and coding style guides PSRs. They're very boring and very opinionated. Um, follow them if you'd like. You can slap a pretty sticker on your project and say, I'm PSR 1 and 2 compliant, and nobody's really going to care that much, except for the people who go and uh, contribute back to it. Meanwhile, uh, the first, uh, in my opinion, real sort of uh, in the spirit of PSRs, PSR is PSR3. This is the logger interface. This is very similar to the kinds of loggers you find in other languages like Golang. Um, Google has something that calls glog that they export to C and many other languages like that. Uh, this is just a unified infrastructure for you to declare events that happen within your code. Now, if I'm using some nice library that does, I don't know, calculates my Fibonacci numbers, and I want to get warnings from it when it comes up with Fibonacci numbers that are divisible by a billion and one. It may have a way to declare that warning, but how do I catch that? Do I just tail standard out or do I look at syslog? Well, if it's logging to a standard logger interface like PSR3, I can declare my own log sort of catcher, my own, log, um, my own logger instance. And then it's just going to call the info method or the log or the warn method or the error method on that. More typically, what you find is uh, this will be attached to a website loader, and if a slow query comes through, your query subsystem might want to send a warning that logs down to something that you can actually pick up and look at later without having to split up a big Apache log or something. Um, this one, actually, I think this one was also Jordy's, come to think of it. Smart guy. PSR 6, uh, together with its sibling PSR 16, are the caching PSRs. You're going to hear more about those tomorrow from um, Hannes. Um, these are, PSR 6 is sort of the, uh, the academic scientist's idea of a caching interface. You can have very advanced, very detailed control about your cache entries, their lifetime, um, what structure they have. Um, Access control isn't in there, right? No, but yeah, you can have uh, asynchronous writes to your caches. Very detailed for about a 5% edge case of your uses. My projects tend to want to use PSR 16 caches. PSR 16 is a lot more like what you are going to expect from a very simple git and put sort of interface. It's all CRUD APIs. You, does the record exist? If so, get it. Otherwise, set it from wherever you got it or delete it out of your cache. Four basic operations. I wish they had picked better names for these. If I had been part of the, P the fig group by then, I probably would have suggested better names because PHP's uses of namespace don't really let you remap method names very well, but eh. At least we do have support for these in Drupal, uh, APCU, file cache, symphony cache, PSX cache, bunch of packages. Go out and look at packages. You're going to find these all over the place. PSR 11, I think of as the sort of read-only version of PSR 16. It's just that much more simpler. Um, it is not caching specific, though. So if you have just a big dictionary of values, you can expose a PSR 11 interface on that. And then anything that is able to consume PSR 11 is going to pull your values out. Personally, I also like to call those arrays. But again, um, some people like to object-orient everything. PSR 13. Swear to God, no idea what you would use this for. Um, PSR 13 is for hypermedia links. Um, these are the things that show up in the head block of your HTML documents. This formalizes them into PHP objects. Nobody can tell me what this is actually used for. This is one of actually the earlier PSRs that was started, and I think it just got pushed through with uh, sheer will and determination. Uh, one of the things that is required for a PS, uh, PSR to actually become official is that there must be at least two existing implementations of it out in the wild. So somebody's using it. I'm not that someone. <coughs> this is where things get really interesting in my opinion. And these are the HTTP related PSRs. There's four of them right now. Uh, two are, two, three. Two or three of them are finalized. Uh, and the other one or two are still in draft and review. 
but we start with the HTTP message. This takes sort of the generic concept of like, well, I know what the state of my web application is. It's in this arbitrary object model over here. It takes that and it formalizes it into a set of request and response interface uh, converging methods. These aren't gonna tell you everything about your application, but they are going to put it in a context that it can then be used with PSR 15 middleware. So you start a request, you get a request object from PSR 7, and then you pass it off to some other library factory that knows how to deal with, PSR, with HTTP messages. And it's gonna do some standardized operation on that message. Tra trail a bunch of those together, suddenly you have an application workflow and that creates this transformation from request to response. Anyone using PSR 7 and 15 in, in, in the wild? Hate it? Like it? It just does the job? No opinions? I got a thumbs up. That's good. <coughs> Excuse me. Throat's getting dry. So those are all the approved PSRs. Um, the, the fig overall is still fairly young. Um, we have hit a couple of sort of uh, bumps in the road along the way. We've had to reorganize a couple of times. We're actually on version three of FIG already, which is scary when you consider we only have 11 active PSRs. But we do have these three in draft. Um, I'm going to skip 14 for a second, move into 17. This is HTTP factories. Uh, factories is basically answering the question, where do these HTTP messages come from? It's all well and great to define interfaces. But if you want to have a standard HTTP conversation, well, you're going to get your request is going to come from PHP itself, right? You're going to have underscore request, underscore files, all those things. This provides a unified way of being able to take those messages and turn them into a request object. And of course, different projects are going to want to turn those variables into requests in different ways. So that's fine. That's why these are just interfaces. So you can have any project that defines an HTTP factory, take those source materials and turn them into messages that you can then pass into middleware. So whatever you're doing right now to implement 7 and 15, this is going to give you another layer in that picture that you can be able to swap out to other pieces. Uh, 18, uh, I am the sponsor on 18 actually, and I have been falling behind on my work uh, because I have other work to do, but H teen is for HTTP clients. This is sort of the, the, the crux piece for a client side of an HTTP conversation. We'll create a, a request. We'll run it through some middleware to get it ready to go. We actually need to be able to send that to a server in order to get a response back and then process that response. So H PSR 18 cl HTTP clients provides a common interface for things like Guzzle and HTTP plug to be able to swap, be swapped out. Again, sort of complete the HTTP processing picture, which ends up looking a little like this. And I oh, can't get the water, it's a childproof cap. Oh, sorry. As I said, lifetime of a message, start at a factory, through some middleware, client comes back from the server, response back through some middleware. You don't have to have middleware. You can process those request and response however you want, but uh, if you're using somebody else's code, they can expose that code as middleware and then it just slides right in. Uh, event manager, makes sense to have a pub sub sort of interface. So this allows you to say, hey, I'm interested in these events, or hey, I produce these events, here's some events, and then an event manager can actually dispatch those to people who are listening for them. Uh, there's one PSR that is actively in review right now. Um, draft PSRs don't count as being in review. They are pre-review. The one that's in review is the updated coding style guide. Because, let me, let me ask, I don't think I asked earlier. Anyone actually caring enough about PSR 1 and 2 to actually implement them and say, hey, I'm PSR 2 compliant? Really? Okay, well. Good news, there's updated uh, guides and recommendations. Uh, these sort of address what has changed in the language since. Um, things like putting in uh, declared strict types and where you should stick your namespace blocks, things like that. It's a fairly minor set of updates. Uh, I definitely disagree with the K and R bracing that's in there, but 
I've been hurt on that one. We also sadly have four abandoned PSRs. PSR5 dock blocks, uh, I think everybody just automatically uses uh, PHP document or doc blocks, right? Like that's just the standard. Uh, we tried to codify that. The biggest problem we ran into here is that there are no competing technologies. And you can't have two implementations if there's only one uh, uh, active one out there. So eventually that just got dropped out of purely practical uh, means. We don't have anyone else to, uh, to run that against. But it's fine, because we're all doing it anyway. And we all know to do it, right? Document your stuff. Come on. Uh, PSR 8, huggable. This was, of course, a joke. This was a, 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 uh, an April Fool's thing. Uh, I have seen it in a couple of projects, um, not actually using the interface, because, of course, the interface isn't published because it's not a published PSR. But occasionally, you'll just see function hug hiding in a PHP class. If you see it, this is why. Um, so allows you to uh, give consent to be hugged, I guess. Uh, PSR 9 and 10 go together. These are the security advisories and security reporting PSRs. The idea here is to say, hey, at least as a group of PHP developers, we agree that we'll give you um, advisories on things that have been found to be buggy in our software or um, ways for you to tell us problems in our software. I think the main problem with this is that there's nothing PHP specific about it. This PSR was all about, hey, this is where you, what uh, hypermedia link that you put out to tell people where to find, find your bug reporting or, or your list of bugs. That's language agnostic, really. And I think that's ev eventually what the people backing up PSR 9 and PSR 10 decided. Um, these PSRs actually came in prior to Fig 3, so there wasn't that sort of pre-draft phase. So they were able to pick up their PSR numbers without getting that sort of first look uh, chance to say, hey, this is maybe not a good best idea for PHP. Um, as I said, 10 as well. So the main reason that I like to talk to people about FIG is I want to invite people to get involved. PHP belongs to everyone who uses it. It is one of the most open languages I have seen on the internet in my many, 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 many years in terms of the democraticness of being able to be involved with it at some level, whether you're writing documentation or whether you're actually contributing code to PHP's internals, or you're putting packages on Packagist, or you're, whatever you're doing, PHP is built around this idea of it's your language, and it, is, it grows and it thrives with your participation. So I want to invite everyone in this room, and, and everyone else really, to get involved in FIG or some other part of PHP, but FIG in particular. We've got an IRC channel where we hang out. We've got a Slack. We're supposed to get uh, a self-invite portal for it. We don't have it yet, but if you ask me, I can get you into the Slack. Um, we do all of our primary discussion on Google Groups, so go ahead and join that link. It's right there. And as I said at the beginning, decisions are made by the people who show up. If you don't like something about a PSR, it's because you weren't involved in the conversation early enough to complain about it. You're welcome to come up with a new PSR. Or hey, as these PSRs are coming in, you don't, you don't like the way the HTTP client's PSR is involved, is being done? Now's the perfect time to tell us, because we're going to go to an entrance vote, hopefully fairly soon. So take a look at that PSR. It's all up there on GitHub. Tell us what's wrong with it, and we can make it better together. Um, and of course, propose your own working groups um, if you think there's new things. I really do want to get a streams PSR going eventually. If people have thoughts on streams, grab me. We can talk about them and we can come make them even better, because the current state of streams is not great. Structurally speaking, uh, I alluded to this on several points. Um, FIG is made up large, mostly of technically three bodies. There are the voting members. These are the actual projects that are involved. There's 38 projects. Each one has one representative assigned. They get one vote. So when it comes time to accept a PSR, those people are the ones actually voting on it. They are also the people who are able to um, uh, act as editors on PSRs. Anyone can propose one, but you do need a member project to a member project or a core committee member to be an editor. And you need one core committee member to be the sponsor. Core committee is uh, an elected group of people, usually 12. As I said, we lost our Welshman. Um, we are elected to two-year terms. Mine is up at the beginning of next year. Uh, we have 
elections every eight months to cycle out groups of four at a time. That seat will remain empty until his election comes up, which I think is this August anyway. So it's, if you'd like to get on the core committee, now's the time to put out your nomination. Uh, and the last group is the secretaries. We have three people who are responsible for the day-to-day -day operations. They assign PSR numbers, they manage the GitHub repository, the website, things like that. Um, we got down to one person at one point, so don't think there's a huge amount of competition for these jobs. These are not particularly thankful jobs, but they are work that needs getting done. Uh, the next secretary will be up for nomination in August 31st, so yeah. And that's all I have to say. Um, are there questions that people would like to ask me about? Fig. <laughs> Crickets. All right, so we're quiet because we're already using PSR packages and we think it's awesome and we're just here to kill some time for 40 minutes, or we're quiet because uh, I use the word y'all too much, and there's no French version of that. I, I noticed it at the start. I'm like, why am I saying y'all? I never say y'all. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you very much. It was very interesting. Uh, I have a question. Um, on the vote committee, you have um, project managers and um, doers, oh. like editors, right? Uh, I would say project representatives yeah, rather yeah. than leaders. Um, but what don't you involve uh, industry, like uh, companies that use the products? Um, can they maybe um, bring something like the usage, the, the, the feedback? Um, Thank you. So, so I would actually say we, we do try to involve um, uh, what, what I would describe as, as industry. The, the people who are project, uh, uh, project members, these are not necessarily uh, actual like framework vendors or or library vendors. These are these can also be applications. People using these things. Um, the only thing you need to be to be uh, involved as a full member uh, of PHP Fig is to be voted in. So if you if you come along and say, hey, you know what? Uh, Oracle has got a vested interest in the success of PHP, and here's why. Convince. Okay, math is hard, but I'm going to say about 23 of the, the member projects to, to, to agree with that. And there, Oracle's got a seat now. Um, I would say, why don't we have, well, so what, what sort of industry um, members would you, would you picture being involved there? I mean, I used Oracle as sort of a ridiculous example. Yeah, Oracle is <laughs> it's big and active. Uh. Company, but uh, now I was thinking like. Je sais pas comment on dit SS2I en anglais en fait. Quelqu'un sait comment on dit SS2I en anglais? Yeah, um, like. Yes, smile for instance. Uh, but uh, service com service companies. So 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 like um, uh, people who write applications for yeah. for other clients and yeah. things like that. Um, yeah, I mean. Honestly, I would file those under the category of applications. We have an application who is part of the group called Fergie. Fergie is literally an IRC bot application. There's not a lot of room to, to argue that Fergie is producing a lot of libraries for others to consume. Fergie's there as a consumer of libraries. And somebody who has an interest in, I want interfaces that make sense. I want interfaces that are actually usable for me as an application developer. If we can have Fergie as a member, then we can sure as heck have, would you smile or, or Web agencies in general, like like, there's certainly no reason why we couldn't, but nobody's like going out and looking for them. Um, I think uh, we're still kind of in a phase where um, it is helpful that all the member projects also have personal relationships connecting them all. Um, I'm not saying that's a requirement, but it's sort of helping us at the stage that we're at now. There's a hint. Sorry, I can barely see you guys. These lights are insane. Uh, thanks. Um, do you have some ins inspiration from other uh, things like PEP for Python or GSR for Java? Did you? We, we've at definitely that? looked at other organizations like PEP. Uh, as I said, FIG has undergone multiple rounds of, of its own personal evolution. We're on FIG 3 right now. 
And a lot of those evolutions have come from other organizations. Um, a lot of it actually ended up coming from Drupal's uh, processes uh, just because of the specific people who were involved in redrafting uh, how, how the organizations were gonna be laid out. Um, but yeah, uh, you use PEP as, as an example. That is one that um, has been part of that picture. Uh, we're not looking at like how uh, ISO C++ does their processes. Um, not that they're a bad pick, but just because um, we only have about two people who pay attention to that group, so we, we end up not uh, pulling as many things from it. But um, the, the FIG uh, bylaws are actually set in a way that they can be easily amended. So um, if, if people come up with better processes, we'll definitely adjust the processes. Uh, PHP has an RFC process. It's sort of a very scaled down, minimalized version of what FIG does. And we have evolved that process a few times over the course of the years as well. And we just do that by suggesting an RFC. Because I'm also involved in that as well, of course. <laughs> All right, well, we should, we should, we should uh, surrender the room then, I guess. Thank you all very much for coming um, and being with such a wonderful audience.